From Hollywood, the Raleigh Cigarette Program, starring Red Skelton, with Ozzie Nelson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard, and Wonderful Smith. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it said, and it's been proved, it pays to advertise. But in Raleigh Cigarette Advertising, you are the one who is paid. Paid with handsome bridge tables, silverware, electric clocks, and over 70 other luxurious premiums. You see, the magnificent premiums you get with Raleigh Cigarette coupons are actually a form of Raleigh Cigarette Advertising. These luxury items are bought and paid for out of our profits just like any other advertising. It is our belief that this type of cigarette advertising, exclusive with the makers of Raleigh's, is the best way to dramatize. That is, to give you tangible proof that Raleigh's give you more for your money. First of all, a finer cigarette, made with a choicer, more expensive golden tobaccos, the very finest that modern equipment and scientific manufacture can produce. And secondly, a plus value in the form of magnificent premiums that pleasantly remind you over and over again that it pays in many ways to smoke Raleigh's. The pack with a coupon on the back. Raleigh cigarettes. playing I Know That You Know. And now we bring you Metro Golden Mayor's newest young comedian, the star of our show, Red Skelton. <laughs> Army and Navy oh, oh. <laughs> Thank you very much and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you tonight, Truman? What you been doing? Huh? Hello, Red. Well, sir, I've just had my first glimpse of the new spring fashions around town. Yeah, say, aren't those hats wearing the silliest women this year? Huh? <laughs> Say, have you seen the new hats for the California women? For California women? No, yeah. I haven't. Really. Well, they're made up special. They yeah. have two avocados, some lemon peels, some grapefruit rinds, a snow shovel, and it's set off by fog lights with a smudge pot at each end. <laughs> Boy, no matter what happens, they're ready. <laughs> I saw another lady wearing a picture hat. A picture hat? Yeah, it looked like the last reel of they died with their boots on. I had an uncle died with his boots on once. <laughs> once? Yeah, that was enough. <laughs> what happened, Ozzy? Was he a horse thief? Yeah, he was hung. No, he was hanged. Come to think of it, he was stabbed. <laughs> Hello, Harriet. Say, have you bought any new hats yet? Oh, uh, no. I just take an old one and kick it around the house until I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Say, I think some of the new spring styles are terrific. Yeah? Those new earrings, for example. New earrings? What do they do? Here for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, Red. They're little glass bowls full of water with real fish in them. Real fish in them? Oh, boy, there's progress for you. Nowadays, when a girl shakes her head no, not only does she mean no, but she hits you in the face with a salmon at the same time. <laughs> Say, you know, with no material to work with, how are they going to make dresses? I know. First, they'll take a piece of thread. Yeah? That's all. (laughs) They'll put a price tag on it and sell it. (laughs) You know, I was reading in the paper uh, only last night that women's clothes only weigh two and a half pounds. Sure, but that's in the winter. Yeah. (laughs) You know, Red, I feel sorry for the stout women. Somebody ought to design them a few special clothes. Well, they have, Harriet. Only yesterday I saw a fat woman wearing the latest Chaparelli wobble. (laughs) I used to wobble once. (laughs) You, Ozzy, you're not fat. Oh, no, it wasn't that, Red. You see, I bought a cheap suit and I got caught in the rain. You got caught in the rain, Ozzy? What happened? Well, I arrived home in a pair of tweed shorts and an Eton jacket. (laughs) 
understand that due to the shortage of materials, men's pants won't have any belt straps or buttons for suspenders or anything. They won't? No. Tell me, how are they going to hold them up? Did you ever hear of the clutching hand? <laughs> I'm still trying to get some garters. Well, what's holding up your socks? Well, I'm using a piece of piano string to hold my socks up. Now, every time I scratch my leg, it plays Rose O'Day. In our story tonight, a boy meets a girl, and they both put on the dog and strive desperately to impress each other, and the following phony conversation is the result. I adore Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. How about you? Well, my favorite is Chopin's Third Obligato. Oh, yes, and awfully good, too. I'm mad about those famous old sculptors with their masterpieces of clay. Yes, but don't belittle the present, my dear. We have some wonderful chiselers today. I'll say. I love the cinema. How about you? Well, the cinema's very nice for a change, but I do like a good movie, too. And when I feel a bit weary, nothing makes me so cheery as two or three saucers of tea. You like that? Oh, I certainly do. How about you? Later, they get better acquainted, and she finds out that he went to Hoboken High, and he finds out that she went to PS 146, and then they really tell the truth with this result. I go for ham and eggs. How about you? Well, my favorite is much more romantic. I like mulligan stew. I like to jitterbug till my feet are numb. Well, I like Amos and Andy and Penny Store Candy and Abner and Lum. I love the bright lights of a Hollywood premiere. How about you? Yes, the opening of that meat market in Glendale last year. That was the best one I went to. And when I go to a movie show and all the lights are low, I take off my shoes. I know it's not nice. Well, I like it. How, How about, about you? That was Harriet Hilliard and Ozzie Nelson singing How About You, and very good, too. Say, Harriet, you know, you deserve a raise, and I'm going to give it to you. Well, it's about time, Red. I don't want to complain, but $13 a week. <laughs> oh, superstitious, huh? <laughs> I'm not superstitious. It's surprising, though, the number of people who believe in those things. Yeah? Ozzie always carries a lucky horseshoe. I knew him when he wore them. <laughs> Say, Red, how about showing the different types of superstitious people, huh? Say, that's a pretty good idea. First, let's show the a superstitious fellow who walks up the boardwalk and meets one of those fakers who reads crystal balls, palms, and bumps. Stamp right up, folks. Let me tell you past, present, and future. The Swami sees all, tells all, also girdles, vulcanized for cheap. Hey, you. Uh, do you all wish to converse with me, sir? Yeah, you want to buy a lucky charm? Something to carry around in your pocket. Maybe a rabbit's foot, huh? Nope. Got a whole rabbit around my neck now. <laughs> a whole rabbit? That won't bring you any luck. Maybe not, but it's nice and warm. <laughs> well, step inside my tent. Let me tell your fortune, huh? Okay. Now, right... Th <laughs> this is the only tent on the boardwalk with a door. <laughs> Now that you're inside, welcome to Madame Gin Rummy's Crystal Gazing Palace. Is Madame Gin Rummy here? She, yes, she is, just as soon as I put my wig on. 
I don't think I want my fortune told. Sure you do. I bet you don't even know what your own future is, do you? No, sir. Not since Santa Anita closed. <laughs> you know, mister, I can tell fortunes, too. Well, fan my brow. You can't. Yes, sir. If you'll just sit down, I'll read the bumps on your head. How'd you know I had a bump on my head? You're a pedestrian, ain't you? <laughs> now, do you want your fortune told, or shall I just take your dough without telling you a thing? Go ahead, I's all it is. Yeah, you ain't kidding me, Vic. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, would you like to have your palm red? Yes, sir. Wait till I take off my glove. Uh, I notice you're only wearing one glove. Did you lose the other one? No, I found this one. <laughs> You know, I also read tea bags. You mean tea leaves? No, tea bags. I do it the hard way. <laughs> now take this bag and squeeze it out and make a witch. Okay, I'll squeeze it. <laughs> well, did you make a wish? Never mind a wish. Just hand me a towel. <laughs> now look, Bub, you gotta concentrate. Now over here is our wishing well. The echo comes back whenever you yell in there. Now, I'll show you what I mean. Okay. Hello! Hello! How are you? Hello! I said, how are you? Hello! What a chance of what I said. I ain't getting that kind of money. Well, if you can't do, Bunt, take a look in the crystal ball and what do you see? Uh, wait a minute. I see my gal getting dressed by an open window. Look, I said look into it, not focus it. <laughs> now I'll see if the spirits are with me. Answer me, spirits. Are you with me? <gasps> Thank you, John Paul Jones. <laughs> uh, now I'll wrap on the table here. I'll wrap on the magic table to see if the spirits are here. I'll try it again. Hello! <laughs> well, I guess I'll have to use the crystal ball after all. Now, looking in here, I see Central Avenue. I see a girl walking down the street. Has she, she got a red called... dress on? Yeah, do you know her? No, but can you fix it? <laughs> I'm sorry, she only goes out with spirit wolves. Well, tell her I look like a coyote. You don't have to. Everybody knows that. Now, now, quiet. I'm getting a message here. Now, let's see. The message says, if you want to meet your true love, go down to the graveyard tonight at midnight. And in the full moon, when the owl hoots 13 times, she'll meet you on a tombstone, third shroud to the left. Well, so long. You going to the graveyard? I'll wait till she moves to a better neighborhood. <laughs> Then we have a uh, fella who uh, is on his way to see his girl. Clem, the fella from the country. And as it opens up, he is on his way to see his girl as usual. <laughs> oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Do, 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 do. My darling Clementine. I wish he was my darling. Well, look who's in town. There's Chrissy. Hello, Chrissy. Hello. <laughs> Windy old bird, ain't he? Well, I better be getting over to Daisy June's house. I wonder how I look today. Now, let me see. Where's my compact? <laughs> oh, here it is. Hmm. I better comb my hair. I look like something that's seen its shadow. <laughs> well, I'll just run the comb through it lightly. <laughs> sure is tough going through that first inch of stickum. <laughs> Uh-oh, there's a kitty cat. I better get out of here. He might have a white strip down his back. <laughs> Oh, it's worse than I thought. It's a black cat, and that's bad luck. 
Oh, I hope he don't see me. I better hurry up across the street so he won't cross my path. <laughs> better hurry, too. Fine place to leave a garbage pail. <laughs> Empty, too. <laughs> now stop laughing, kitty cat. <laughs> you stop licking my face, too, and don't walk in front of me. Or you'll be able to wind up as a G-string on my banjo. <laughs> oh, I gotta get away from this black cat somehow. I think I'll climb over this fence here. Mm, right leg up. Mm, left leg up. Now both legs down quick. Go <laughs> oh, gone, you cat. Look what you made me do. I ripped my pants and they were my good pants, too. Good for a couple of more days, anyway. <laughs> oh, shut hey, up. what you doing out there? Hello, Clem. Well, see. <laughs> Clem, what are you up to? Up to my neck. I'm standing in a mud puddle. Well, wipe off your chin and come on in the house. Say, so you tell your Uncle Denny to get his shotgun and get this cat away from me. Oh, well, Uncle can't come out. He's disappeared. Disappeared? Where did he go? Well, I don't know, but you know them ships you build and put inside a glass bottle? Yeah. Well, ours has got a passenger. <laughs> oh, gee, Clem, that's a pretty bow tie you're wearing. No. Where'd you get it? Well, it's the tie I saw in the catalog. Oh, don't tell me you sent away for it. No, I cut it out and pasted it on my shirt. <laughs> Oh, here comes that darn black cat again. I wish I could get rid of him. You got a saucer of milk? Sure, Clem. I'll get you one. Okay. Here you are. Oh, that... Thanks. <laughs> Gosh, I was thirsty. <laughs> well, I, know, I know what I'll do with this black cat. I'll catch him and put him in this bag here and throw him in the river. It's bad, but I'll do it. <laughs> Well, come here, kitty. No, it's kitty. No, now, Clem, kitty. you be careful. No, don't worry, you worry your little head about me. I'll handle this cat, all right. Come here. We'll put you inside this bag. Get in there. <laughs> oh, Daisy June. Yes, Clem? Where are you? Get a knife and cut me out of here, will you? <laughs>
was Ozzy Nelson and his orchestra playing Sonny Dispossessed. <laughs> uh, say, Truman, you've uh, been telling us all that Raleigh's are made from the more golden tobaccos, haven't you? That's right, Red. Mm-hmm. Raleigh's cigarettes are undeniably made from the choicer, more expensive golden tobaccos. And I'm going to prove that to you right now. Well, how's that? Well, Red, I'm going to get someone else's opinion. Uh, I've asked a gentleman from the audience to come up here. Will you, sir, help us with this little test? If I can. You can, all right. Now, here are five opened packages of cigarettes, all leading brands. The names are carefully covered, of course. Now, look at the ends of each and tell us which has more golden tobaccos, will you please? My, uh, these cigarettes. Now, will you please remove the paper cover that hides the name and tell us what brand you picked? Raleigh's. Friends, there's proof beyond dispute that the tobacco in Raleigh's is unmistakably more golden in color. Experts will tell you that these golden tobaccos are choicer, more expensive. And remember, 31 of these selected tobaccos go into Raleigh's exclusive blend. That's why Raleigh's are so distinctively outstanding in taste and flavor, so smooth and mild. And in addition, Raleigh's give you Valuable coupons redeemable for over 70 luxury premiums. Ladies and gentlemen, the proof is right before your very eyes that it pays in many ways to get the pack with a coupon on the back. Raleigh Cigarettes. Say, to get back to the superstitions, we have a lady and her little boy. It's, uh... It's Friday the 13th, and she is very superstitious. So, Harriet, you be my mother, and I'll be the mean little kid on the block. <laughs> Mommy! Mommy! Mommy, dog! Gee, you the poor man from the piano store took Mommy, too? <laughs> you call me, Junior? Yeah. Where are you? Here I am, Mommy, up on the fireplace. Come down from there, Junior. Okay, get through that great knit picture first. What's the matter with the picture? It's crooked. Napoleon's hand keeps sliding out of his van. <laughs> hey, Mommy, you know what I did today? I learned how to whistle. You really learned how to whistle? Yeah, listen. <whistles> yep, there goes the last of me baby teeth. <laughs> What happened while I was gone? Well, you come over here, I will show you the picture I do with me little paint pot. You bring the picture over here. Okay. Help me carry the wall. <laughs> oh, Junior, how many times have I told you not to paint pictures on the wall? How many times? Well, answer me. I count them. <laughs> oh, dear, just look at that wall. Why did you paint a picture on the wallpaper with paint? Well, this this knife was too dull. (laughs) Oh, Junior, you should be ashamed marking up my wall. Yes, I should. And what happened to that phone number? What happened to that phone number I wrote down? You mean the one the ice man gave you the (laughs) morning? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? (laughs) Mommy, can I go? Can I marry Shirley Temple? Hmm? Don't be silly. Shirley Temple's older than you are. She is? Yes. When did that happen? <laughs> and mommy. What you want, Junior? What you doing, hmm? What you doing, hmm? What you doing, hmm? I'm cleaning house. <laughs> cleaning house and it's some job. Yeah. Junior, I have to wash the windows, so please stay away from the ladder, huh? Okay. If you run under it, it's bad luck. Okay, I will run under it just once, huh? Now, who tied my two legs together? <laughs> Listen, you keep on and you'll get a spanking so hard you'll think you're riding an electric fan side saddle. <laughs> hey, Mommy, can I take my tricycle out and go play in a tweet? No, you can't ride your tricycle in the street. Somebody might run over you and get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> now, look, why don't you run along and play someplace else, huh? Okay, it's Saturday afternoon. Can I go down to the theater and see the cowboy picture, hmm? No, Junior, it's Friday the 13th. It is? You be careful, you'll have bad luck all day. I didn't know you were too particular, Mommy. <laughs> Why, Junior, didn't you know that if you step on a bug, it'll rain? I stepped on a bug yesterday. Did you get permission from the California Chamber of Commerce? 
Uh, no, I didn't have to. It was a Japanese beetle. <laughs> Things you say and do. Yeah, I'm a regular cut weight Mickey Rooney, ain't I? <laughs> I'm going out in the street and play. I told you, you can't go out into the street. Now, you let me go out and play or I would tell. You'll tell what? I would tell everybody that you got four pounds of sugar stacked away. <laughs> Junior, you wouldn't. Yes, I would, too. I seen it. I know right where you got a head, too, boy. I know. I seen it. I, I know. Right next to them automobile stamps you swiped last night. Junior! Well, you hit me. I've got a good mind to spank your funny bone again. Mommy. Yes? That's something I gotta tell you. I mean, somebody gotta tell you. Well, what is it? My funny bone ain't where you think it is. Well, maybe not, but it gets results. Yeah, sure do. And another thing, did you eat your spinach? Yes, I eat my spinach. Did you eat your peas yes, and your carrots and your turnips and your radishes? And Listen, your... Mom, I've eaten so many vegetables that me little stomach looked like Carmen Miranda's hat. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. I'll show you my new hat, Junior. Oh, you will? There, how do you like it? Hmm? I said, how do you like it? I would tell you, but it would only lead to bloodshed. Just for that, you go up to your room and take a nap. Oh, all right, okay. Dictator! <laughs> well, here I is. I sure been a meanie today. I, uh, <laughs> boy, I sure you're proud of me tough today. Here I is, all alone in my widow room. And it's a beautiful day, too. Just look at the sun shining through the bars. <laughs> I wonder what I could do to uh, keep me in trouble but out of jail. <laughs> Let's see. What can I do to pass the time away? I think I will cry, climb out the window and slide down the drain pipe. <laughs> if I do, I get a whipping. <laughs> I do it. <laughs> I would slide down the drain pipe and make a getaway on me tricycle. Oh, boy. Oh, look what's laying out here on the roof, a horseshoe. Somebody must have thrown it up here. I will fit on it and throw it over my shoulder. It will bring me luck. Ah, oh, let me chin. Ooh, I hit me tough on the head. I forgot to let go. I got a lump on me with a head. I can't tell which is the lump and which is me with a head. <laughs> come here, horse, you. I'll have to do it again. Now, I mustn't look where it falls or my wish won't come true. Oh, here goes again. Please. Oh, boy, I don't have to look where that baby went. <laughs> well, I better get the paper quick. Junior, what happened? <laughs> Who threw that horseshoe through the window? Oh, look at the big lump on your head. It hit you, didn't it? Oh, my poor darling, I'll call the doctor. You see, folks, if you did keep your mouth shut, everything worked out in your favor. <laughs> Ozzy and the orchestra recall pleasant memories with their playing of a hit tune of other years, Great Day. But for truly great days ahead, we ask you to listen to this interesting message. Pipe smokers, try Sir Walter Raleigh. Sir Walter Raleigh has a nut-like mellowness, a smooth, tangy richness that no other tobacco offers. It's full-bodied, mild, burns even and cool, never bites your tongue. With all of this, Sir Walter Raleigh has a more pleasing, fragrant aroma. It's the quality pipe tobacco of America, available at the price of just ordinary tobacco. Try Sir Walter Raleigh tonight. We'll all be back again Tuesday at the same time. Red Skelton, Ozzie Nelson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard, Wonderful Smith, and yours truly, Truman Brandy. Until next Tuesday, then... Red Skelton saying goodbye now. Thanks for listening. Red Skelton is heard on this program through the courtesy of the Metro Golden Mayor Studio. The program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.